Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be trying some new makeup, doing a full face get ready with me whilst sharing even more embarrassing stories. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing something that very few people know about me. My darkest secret, the best kept secret in my life, only my very close family and a couple of friends know about this. So yeah, today the stories are gonna be, they are gonna be some stories, okay? So along with mortifying myself for your entertainment today, I'm going to be trying the new Golan Terracotta Latent Foundation. I was not interested in this at all, but so many of you guys have been asking me to try it, asking me about it, my thoughts on it, that you guys made me interested. I was like, oh, Galan, you know, foundations, not really a brand I'm that excited about, but between you guys being so interested in it and the new highlighter being like a new holy grail for me, I, you guys had me interested. You guys changed my mind. You got my interest peaked. So we're gonna try this one today. And speaking of highlighters, I have the other shade. You guys know I've been using the gold shade of their new terracotta luminizers for weeks. And today I also, have the other shade, the cool ivory shade to try. I also have a couple of products from Suku's new collection. I have one of their eyeshadow palettes and one of their new blushes for spring. And I also have a new shade of the Armani lip power that was just released. So if you're interested in these products and you're interested in laughing at my expense, <laughs> then let's get started. Okay guys, so for today's story, really I should say it's like a series of stories that center around a secret that I have been keeping from you a secret I've been keeping from pretty much everybody very few people know this about me or have heard these stories that I'm going to be sharing with you today my greatest shame my greatest secret and probably one of the most entertaining things about me, if that is, you're not my husband. And the secret is, I am a sleep talker. Not just your average sleep talker, but an utterly bizarre, insane, unhinged sleep talker. So I'm going to be sharing a few of my favorite sleep talking stories with you today at much cost to my pride, to my image as a somewhat stable human being. Those are all going to be dashed today. Those beliefs are out the window once you hear what I get up to under the cover of darkness. So I guess you would say that I became aware that I sleep talk in my teens because that was when I started doing you know a lot of traveling without my parents for swimming galas you know up to sort of I guess like I don't know 10 I always stayed with my parents and I don't know that at this point we knew that I sleep talk I guess I you know I had my own bedroom in our home so who knows what was going down in there and I don't know whether like I always my dad typically took me to all my swimming galas when I was little and you know I would stay with my sister and my dad in a hotel room usually and I don't remember them telling me that I sleep talk but what I have learned over the years is that the more like alien the environment and the less sort of settled and comfortable I am the more likely it is to be a problem so I suppose maybe in a room with like my sister and my dad I was just really comfortable and at home and just slept, you know, like a normal person. But when I, you know, maybe was sleeping with a friend or someone I didn't usually share a room with and I wasn't with my family or my dad, maybe I was just less like comfortable and at home and that's why it started. So this started like in a pretty normal way <laughs> compared to what is coming. You know, my roommates would say, I am I think you were talking in your sleep last night and it would just be like, I said something out loud in the middle of the night and whoever was sharing a room with me, <laughs> the 
poor people would say like what thinking I was talking to them and they would sort of answer and say like what did you say and then I'd be like asleep so that was all it was like, it would be like the sort of normal mutterings of like a sane person that's how it began okay just a kind of muttering under the breath that was barely noticeable <laughs> okay so I'm gonna use this new palette from Suku I mean <laughs> looks so beautiful it looks even more beautiful in person than I thought it was going to be based off of the photos are oh, like so much more beautiful in real life I'm excited this is going to soften the blow of these humiliating stories hopefully I'm going to start off with this shade down here and see where it takes us see where we end up why not so I would say when things really like stepped up, not like a notch, but like 20 notches, okay, was when I met my husband. You know, I had kind of long forgotten about sleep talking because after I split up from my ex, you know, I slept alone for like six months. And I guess what happened is I just got really used to like not sharing my bed and sleeping alone. And so then when I met my husband and you know, we started at some point having sleepovers as you do. And that's where it all started to become quite unhinged, alarming and out of control. And the thing is, it's just not what you want, is it? You know, you're in a new relationship. You're trying to act normal. You're trying to hide like all your weird, embarrassing, you know, little quirks. And, <laughs> and you know, for a while I was able to do that successfully during the daytime, but at nighttime, my body failed me. And this was also the time when not only did I like start talking and saying things in my sleep. Uh, imagine the fear of that with a new partner. <laughs> you could say anything. A stressful time, I tell you. But unfortunately, during this development of like the worst sleep talking of my life, I also started like acting out. Now using this shade at the bottom, which is kind of like a rich brown, but it almost has like some blue like reflex in there, so pretty, wow. So at the beginning, when we first started like staying the night with each other, I, it, it began in the worst possible way. It began with me like screaming abuse at him. <laughs> it was not good. It was not like a good start to a new relationship. So it would be the middle of the night. This is all, I have no memory of any of this. So this has all come from my husband telling me what happened. In the middle of the night, I would just sit bolt upright in bed, eyes open, wide awake seemingly, but not, and start screaming and shouting and calling him like all these names and like just ha like kicking off at him for his, from his perspective, completely out of nowhere. Like imagine how alarming that would be. Like you're just lying there, sleeping, having a nice cozy nap, and suddenly a crazy person starts screaming and shouting and calling you all these names, and you have literally no idea why. So that's how this started. And it was bad because this, like I said, was at the beginning of our relationship, and he fully didn't know that I was a mad person and that I was asleep when this was going on. Like he literally was like, what the hell is wrong with this woman? <laughs> she is broken. And then of course we would wake up in the morning and he would be like really moody and grumpy. And I'd be like, what is your problem? <laughs> or what is wrong with you? And he would say, um, do you not remember what you said to me last night? And I would be like, no. I don't. So this was not great. This was not a great time for our relationship, okay? Because obviously like he, he learned that I was in fact sleep talking, but it's still not nice, you know, to be screamed and shouted at unprovoked for no reason in the middle of the night with no warning. It's not a great time. And it's also the fact that I'm sitting up, eyes open, like I am now, it was hard, very hard for him to get his head around that I, I was in fact asleep. <laughs> Next, of course, I have to get involved with this shade up here. Aww. So that is how it started. We don't know why. It could be that I was still very traumatized from my divorce and I was just taking that all out on my new boyfriend at the time. Unfortunately, uh, in my unconscious sleep state, we don't know what was going on there. I mean, I'm sure a psychologist 
slash sleep specialist would have a field day. But um, yeah, it quickly moved on, luckily. I mean, I could say luckily. You decide which is worse. It quickly moved on to like entire productions. I now entered like the real serious, crazy person sleep talking and not just sleep talking, but like sleep walking. <laughs> and like acting, I guess you would call it. So I became less abusive, but far more unhinged and insane. Great. So the first time this happened that we're aware of, this is the alarming thing about like sleep talking and sleep walking, unless someone like wakes up and sees this, you don't know it happened. <laughs> like who knows what else went down that my husband just didn't wake up and see. <laughs> we're now gonna use this shade just in the inner corner. Oh, that is green. Maybe this is gonna be a mistake. Oh, no, that, I like it. It's pretty. I think I probably in hindsight should have used these shades the other way around, but I'm not mad at it. Such a pretty palette. Okay, so the first incident of the crazy unhinged level of sleep talking, I was having a sleepover at my then boyfriend, now husband's house, and um, in the middle of the night, he woke up to find me doing this on his wall. And like, I was up out of bed doing this in the, in the pitch black. I don't know how we made it. I really have no idea. Charlotte Tilbury mascara, by the way. Um, he obviously was like, what the heck is she doing? <laughs> What's happening? Um, and he said, to me, uh, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I've drawn on the walls. Of course you have, of course you have. He thought, he was like, what? And I said, I've drawn all over the walls. I'm so sorry. And he was like, what the heck? Like he, I mean, what would you have thought if you had woken up to this utter madness? And it's at this point that I'm sort of, coming out of it, this is what happens. So these sort of scenarios, these dream scenarios start, start at some point, I start, you know, sleepwalking and talking and engaging in craziness. And my husband will like inevitably at some point wake up and wonder what on earth is going on. And like halfway through the conversation, I will kind of become more and more like aware and conscious of what's going on. And then I'll start to like realize that this must be, I must've been dreaming this isn't really happening. And then I get really embarrassed and I just pretend this isn't happening. So I was like there, I, I had dreamt that I had drawn all over his walls. And then I was like, oh my God, what have I done? I need to clean this off. And that's when he woke up and was like, witnessed what I was doing. Um, and initially I'm still thinking this is real and this is happening. And then as he's talking to me and being like, what are you on about? It's the middle of the night. I'm realizing, wait, this was a dream and I'm kind of waking up and becoming conscious and so then I just get back into bed and go to sleep as if this didn't happen <laughs> ah, and hope that nobody noticed I guess that's what I was doing Tom Ford primer so that was the first episode and he told me about it in the morning and I'm just like <laughs> no I didn't <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, and that was that. The next time, and probably the worst, most like frightening <laughs> time I did this, we were at my house and I had, um, it was a new build, but they had like made sash windows to like look in keeping with like, you know, baths, buildings. They had sash windows, which like pull up and like really wide open space is revealed, right? So I was in my mind at least, lying in bed when I saw an anaconda, an anaconda coming in through the window, which obviously was terrifying. So of course I jumped out of bed and I didn't wanna just leave my boyfriend to die. So I jumped out of bed screaming my head off. I grabbed hold of him. I start dragging him out of the bedroom, screaming, screaming, screaming. He is obviously quite alarmed and surprised, I imagine in the middle of the night. And so he, we get outside, he is just like, you know, matching my energy. Obviously we're under attack, something terrible is happening. And then we get outside the bedroom, I slam the door and I'm holding the door shut. I'm holding it shut and holding onto the knob and he is still asking me, what is happening? What are we doing? 
what's going on here? And I am saying, there's an anaconda. There's an anaconda in there. Like a completely normal person. Now I think as the words are leaving my mouth is when I realized that's unlikely to be true. That's probably not what's happening here. So this is the new Galan Terracotta Foundation. The first thing is this bottle is glorious with that detail on the cap. I love it. So then again, I then start just like hysterically laughing because this whole scenario is just dawning on me that this is not really happening. Um, it's the sleep talking again. And so I then just like let go of the doorknob, go back into the room. Obviously the windows are shut. So, you know, aside from the fact that we live in England where I don't know that we have any anacondas unless one like escaped from the zoo. Um, but also the window is closed, so none of that can have happened. So I just do my usual again, go back to sleep as if nothing has happened and leave this poor traumatised man to try and go back to sleep. Um, yeah, so that's what we do. Now we're like a good few months into our relationship now and uh, he is getting, you know, slightly more used to these little midnight jollies occurring, these little you know, scenes that just break out in the night every now and then. And there's no pattern, you know, I can go like nights with nothing, like no talking, no nothing. And then I'll have nights where I'll just sit up and say like a few bizarre things and then go back to sleep. And then there'll be nights when, you know, your worst nightmare starts being played out in the middle of the night randomly with no warning. <laughs> you know, this foundation is going on lovely. It has a strange, like almost nutty, fragrance I think the shade is decent it's a hair darker than my natural skin tone but I think the undertone is good so that is fine by me I think probably if I went a shade up it would be too light so I think this is a good match so what my husband has been like learning during this process so far is that you should not argue with me like if you start trying to like talk sense into me or tell me there isn't an anaconda I will just start a go I go back I regress to like the screaming abuse and I get very angry like I'm easily triggered my sleep self is an angry lady and she is easily triggered. So you don't wanna argue with her and you don't wanna mess with her or she will kill you. So he has just learned to just basically go along with it and be like, oh, instead of like being like, Charlotte, you idiot, there isn't an anaconda, are you mad? He would be like, oh, it's gone now, we can go back to sleep. And I'd be like, okay, cool. And so he just learned to basically go along with whatever I was saying. <laughs> the poor man, I mean, what a saint. This is going on beautifully. Nice coverage, very natural. Not bad, Galon. So that was great. And that would like really help like bring me out of it was I think when he would be like arguing with me and being like, what are you on about, you crazy lady? I would get like really angry in my sleep state. So yeah, that really helped. It really helped me be calmer and it helped like diffuse the, the crazy situation that was going on as he just learned like what was happening and to recognize what was happening and he just learned how to sort of calm me down as opposed to like antagonizing me through <laughs> no fault of his own. So that was good. We'd also been together, you know, a good while by this point. So I guess I just was learning to be a bit more comfortable with him and just get a bit more used to having someone else there. So maybe it was getting, you know, less extreme because I just felt like more at home and com comfortable, more relaxed in the night. So the next episode, which is like the one that everybody loves to retell and finds absolutely hilarious is the time I talked about our friend Maka. So Maka is one of my husband's best friends and I think like they had been over for dinner and that's maybe why this happened. So we had gone to sleep, we'd gone to bed. In the middle of the night I am like leaning over my side of the bed, like leaning over like down the side of the bed talking, chattering away, having a lovely time. And my husband obviously wakes up and sees me like chattering away, like down the side of the bed. And he's like, Charlotte, what are you doing? Like his immediate thought is I'm on the phone. Like I'm making a phone call. It's the middle of the night. Something like crazy must have happened. Maybe something bad has happened. She's on the phone. What is she doing? So he's like, Charlotte, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? And I said, shh, shh. I'm talking to Maka. 
So he obviously assumes I must be on the phone because I'm like leaning over the bed, like down here, down the side of the bed, leaning over there to like where my phone would be if it was charging. So, you know, that makes some logical sense, I guess. Far more sense than what I'm actually doing. So he says, what? You're, you're on the phone to Maka? And I said, <laughs> no, silly. He's down here. Is he though? So then my husband is like, what? What do you mean? He's down, he's down there, <laughs> like un under the bed. You can see where this would have caused problems in our relationship. I'm just gonna use a bit of the Hermes bronzer because I don't have a newer one than this. So I am like, yeah, yeah, he's down here. Shh, we're talking, we're chatting. Like, what? what's your problem? So then obviously he's really confused and he says, why are you talking like to Mecca? What, what, what is going on here? And then I say, he's wearing your clothes. He's wearing your clothes. Um, at this point, my husband obviously realizes this is a dream. And I think I start to sort of realize, wait, this probably isn't happening. And then again, I'll just have a little laugh at myself. And then I just go back to sleep and pretend it didn't happen. I found that just avoiding reality really gets you out of a lot of situations. So that's my tip, avoid away. So that's probably like the most entertaining for like our friendship group. Uh, because it's just the weirdest, most random thing ever. And then the most recent episode like that, where there was a full, like, me acting something out, getting out of bed, being absolutely nuts, was when I was pregnant. So this started to, like, amp up. It kind of settled down a bit, you know, as our relationship developed and I got more comfortable sleeping and sharing a bed with someone again. It settled down and then I got pregnant and you know what happens when you get pregnant. Like, the hormones, it, it's a crazy time. It's a very crazy time. So one night, heavily pregnant, by the way, heavily pregnant, I am sleeping, or so I think, when a spider, and this is a this is a dream I have all the time. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I have this recurring dream where I'm like lying in bed and a massive spider comes like dangling down from the ceiling like towards me like that. I've had that dream multiple times. I don't know why, I don't know what it means. It probably means that I hate spiders, which is accurate. New shade of the Galon Luminizer. You guys have seen me use the gold shade and I had to get the rose or the ivory rose, cool ivory shade because I love the other one so much and I think I might like this one even more because it's probably better for my skin tone. <sighs> it's so pretty and flattering and just understated exactly how I like it. So yeah, I was lying there asleep on my pregnancy pillow, like seven months pregnant, maybe even more. When this happened again, this spider, this giant tarantula beast starts dangling down from the ceiling, coming towards me. So I, of course, scream bloody murder, scream the place down. And my husband relays this so well, because obviously I only know what's happening like in my head, whereas he actually sees the reality of what, what goes down. So he says, basically, he, he is w awoken to like a screaming banshee, an absolute blood curdling, deafening, alarming and terrifying scream, the likes of which you've never heard before. And then <laughs> he sees me running past him, across the bed, up on my feet, eight months pregnant, running across our bed. I then obviously hit, we have a sleigh bed, right, with a really big, end like sleigh to it. I then flip over the end of this sleigh bed, like I hit it, I, I'm running like I think I'm running down the road. I run across the bed, hit the sleigh, flip over and land like on my knees on the floor. I mean, that is not good, is it? For a pregnant lady, it should not be <laughs> doing some kind of like crazy superhero moves in the middle of the night. It probably was like not a safe idea. 
So he was obviously quite alarmed, but also amused because I was fine. And obviously I didn't hurt the baby. I had landed on my knees. And, you know, I guess it was, <laughs> from his perspective, quite entertaining and terrifying, as usual, the, the balance that this kind of gives you. It gives you a bit of everything, you know, a bit of terror, a bit of alarm, a bit of fear, a bit of entertainment, depending on the scenario. Now, at this point, my husband's got really, really good at being like really logical and talking me off the ledge. So I'm like convinced this spider, it's in the bed somewhere, it's there, it's a huge tarantula, it's coming down. And he points out the fact that this room is pitch black. It's pitch black in here. Tell me how you could have seen it. Um, and that's when I realise I can't, I can't have, he's right, it's pitch black, there's no way I would have seen it. So then I do my, I, do, I go back to my default, oh cool, let's just go back to sleep then and pretend that didn't happen. And the next day I have like no memory of this, right, the next day I have no memory of this. I go to get in the shower and I'm like, oh my god, literally my shins were bruised black and blue from like my knee to like my ankle, bruises all over my shin. And I'm like, what on earth? I'm saying to my husband like, what, how, why am I so bruised? Oh my God, my shins hurt so badly. And he was like, do you, do you not remember what happened last night? The little Annika rice off the end of the bed? No, no memory of it whatsoever. And now I have one of the new blushes as well from the Suku collection. I really love this formula. It's so nice, it's so luminous and glowy. It's just really about whether you can find a shade that you love because a lot of them are like very light and for kind of lighter, fair skin tones. So when they bring out a shade that I know is gonna work for me, I'm all over it because they're such a nice formula. It's kind of that like gel powder formula. They're always beautifully luminous, very smooth very buildable, just a gorgeous blush formula. I really love it. And I, when I saw this shade, it was like right up my street because it's nice and neutral, very easy going, perfect every day of the year, very wearable. That is gorgeous, absolutely perfect, wow. Right up my street, a bit sort of mauve, but mostly a very neutral blush. So that was kind of the last time a good, you know, my son is seven now. So, you know, it's been a good number of years that I haven't, as far as we know, <laughs> got up and started like running about and, and doing crazy stuff. I still very much like talk. So, I mean, literally every night this week, my husband said you were chattering about something last night who knows what, but he has very much become like completely immune to it now. He just wakes up, she's like blabbering on to herself, mm, rolls his eyes, goes back to sleep and everything's fine. He doesn't listen. He doesn't engage the beast within. And so everything just works out great. So I noticed there are a couple of new shades, or a few new shades, I think, of the Armani Lip Power have launched, and I'm obsessed with these. I love this formula, but there's very few shades that I'm kind of really interested in. So when I saw this one, 107 release, and it was like exactly what I was hoping for, like some more like nudes, everyday shades. I was excited. Okay, so there you have it. This is the finished makeup look. What a good makeup day I'm having today. Like I had some like products that you know, I know like the Dior concealer isn't new. Obviously the Charlotte Tilbury mascara isn't new, but I feel like everything I use today that is brand new for the first time using today has really worked out amazing. Like the first impressions of this foundation from Golan it's beautiful. It's not my usual like really glowy. I'd say it's like a natural finish, quite skin-like, kind of similar, reminds me of the finish of the Hourglass foundation, maybe like the Lisa Eldridge foundation that it's not really fully matte. It's kind of a satin. There's no like real glow, but it has a kind of luminous natural finish to the skin. Beautiful, very like flawless. I feel like I only use, I didn't use anything, like I literally used about half of what I pumped out of a couple of pumps. Didn't use a lot. It really layered really nicely, you know, canceled out all of my redness and discoloration very easily and quickly without looking heavy or using a lot. And it looks so smooth and flawless. So that was a really great 
first impression. I've also always found Galon's um, undertones to be like too warm. I feel like even their neutral shades previously have been really warm. I feel like this is a really good true neutral undertone. So I'm really happy to see that like their undertones seem to have improved. So I'm definitely going to keep using this one. This is, I'm so far so great. I really think it looks gorgeous. So I will of course keep you posted on how I'm getting on with that one. This eyeshadow palette from Suku is so flipping pretty. It's absolutely stunning. I thought this was, I think Suku are so good. They always do like really interesting color stories. You know, to look at this, I was drawn to it because it looks something different and just a bit unusual, but very pretty and colors that I know, you know, I know I love greens. So I was kind of drawn to it just for it being something different. This is so beautiful on the eyes, so pretty, just gorgeous. You know, it's got a really nice amount of pretty, shimmer without it being like really chunky or being too much it's really beautiful and quite a unique color story so I'm so happy with this I don't know that I thought it was going to be as beautiful as it it is in reality so pretty and it really all works together so nicely as well absolutely beautiful I really I'm pleasantly surprised at quite how pretty this look turned out and the blush i mean i know i love the blush formula from suku again it's just it's sometimes hard for me to find like shades that will work for me and my skin tone but this one is gorgeous it's just the perfect like everyday neutral blush it's very similar to the new dior one that i've been raving about very very close to that one just so beautiful really really nice everyday blush and the formula of the suku blushes if you haven't tried it is gorgeous really glowy and luminous but smooth and flattering and this color is going to be a new favorite now the highlighter formula you guys know already that i am obsessed with it it's become like my most used my favorite highlighter this is the gold that i've been using and then this is the new one that i use today it's maybe a little brighter because it has that lighter color but i think it's so pretty and if you have a lighter skin tone i would definitely go with the ivory shade because i think the gold one is is going to be a bit too light for you because I think the gold might run a bit too yellow on a fairer skin tone. You can see there is quite gold, um, which actually on me it works. I can use it lightly. Obviously, this is a you know a, a thick swatch, but yeah, in summer it will be perfect. And on deeper skin tones, that gold will be gorgeous. But if you have a lighter skin tone, I would definitely go with this one. They're just so pretty and flattering and glowy and luminous but soft at the same time these highlighters i absolutely love like girl on can really smash a highlighter not like literally i mean it, it arrived in one piece i mean they're good at them and then lastly this new lip shade from armani this was exactly what i've been crying out for from this formula it's such a good formula it's a shiny glossy lip that wears amazingly well it's not transfer proof like at all but it somehow just like wears amazingly like even though i've done that it looks still perfect and they are just a really great formula they remind me a little bit of the like finish of the chanel double tenue lipsticks that are transfer proof and also incredibly long wearing but these are you know a bullet some people might prefer it's easier to remove all of that kind of thing but this is a beautiful shade exactly what I was hoping for I wish they would do more nudes more neutral shades because I think everything is quite like either rich or like bright and there's not very many neutral everyday nudes so I'm really glad that they have this new shade. So there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me today for some more hilarious, embarrassing for me stories and to play with this new makeup. I'm glad this was successful because it's kind of softened the blow of like mortifying myself for the sake of entertainment. <laughs> At least, you know, my makeup looks nice, even if I look insane. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.